Guyana, in its capacity as chair of the Group of 77 and China on Thursday, hosted a virtual ministerial-level meeting aimed at finding ways to effectively combat the effects of climate change while also battling COVID-19. The flagship event was held under the theme, Maintaining a Low-Carbon Development Path Towards the 2030 Agenda in the Era of COVID-19. Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation, the Honorable Yu Todd, chaired the meeting. Minister Todd told the attendees that multilateralism was under stress as the world now faces a war against an invisible enemy which has claimed the lives of millions. We must overcome this menace if we are to achieve the Sustainable Development Goals and, ri and rise to the promise of the Paris Agreement. On both accounts, our world is dangerously off course. But COVID-19, even as it threatens, it also teaches. The link between health and sustainability has been sharply underlined. And we are learning, to f and we are learning by force of necessity that, most, that much more can be delivered even today with a smaller carbon footprint. He said it is imperative that lessons from COVID-19 be used to help develop ways to deal with climate change. It is Ghana's hope as chair in this seminal year 2020 that the G77 and China will be able to contribute in thinking and action to a more healthy and sustainable world, keeping the existential threat posed by climate change at the center of global attention. His Excellency Dr. Mohamed Irfan Ali, delivering the opening address, said the gathering will provide guidance on how to deal with climate change and COVID-19 simultaneously. President Ali said the effects of COVID-19 must not distract the G77 from protecting the environment. The COVID-19 pandemic has coincided with a series of unrepented hazards, storms, wildfires, floods and droughts, all linked to unacceptable levels of global warming and climate change. The immediate task of containing, mitigating, and eventually eradicating the COVID-19 coronavirus must not force us to ignore the challenges of protecting the environment and the need for collective action. President Ali reminded the G77 and China of Guyana's vulnerability to climate change and some of the effects it has had on the country. However, the head of state said his administration intends to be proactive in combating climate change. I wish to highlight the role of Guyana's low carbon development strategy. The LCDS is aimed at transforming Guyana's economy to better deliver greater socioeconomic benefits to our people by following a low carbon development path, while at the same time mainstreaming climate resilience. As part of the LCDS, and working in partnership with the Kingdom of Norway, Guyana was able to develop and implement one of the first national scale payment for, climate, for forest climate services through avoided deforestation and sustainable management of our forest resources. We remain committed to advancing the LCDS and to collaborate with international partners to expand our work on Red Plus and payment for climate for forest climate and ecosystem services. With the pandemic diverting attention and resources from climate change, it is necessary that a response to the pandemic and climate crisis be placed at the center of advancement of the Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs. I call on the international community to ensure greater financing is provided to meet the 2030 Agenda on Sustainable Development, particularly in the post-COVID-19 era. Adaptation to climate change is of vital importance and a key component for the implementation of the Paris Agreement for developing countries within G77 and China. In this light, adequate capacity building, financial support, and technology transfer are critical. As chairman of the Group of 77 and China, I call for greater access to climate financing for developing countries. Many developing countries, due to high indebtedness, are constrained in their efforts to generate sufficient resources towards achieving the 2030 Agenda. I call on the international financial community to explore and implement ways where debt can be reduced so as to allow developing countries 
the fiscal space to achieve the SDGs. President Ali stressed that multilateralism is the key to unlocking solutions to humanity's problems and reiterated Guyana's commitment to advancing the movement against climate change. Meanwhile, Chile's Foreign Affairs Minister, the Honorable Andres Alamand, said it is important that the G77 and China work hand-in-hand -hand so that developing countries could benefit. The Chilean minister said adaptation to climate change should be a priority for every member of the group and be a key component of its global response to climate change. Finance must be available, available for all developing countries, and especially to those that are particularly vulnerable. Mr. Chairman, let me tell you that Chile is also doing its part. We were one of the first countries to communicate a stronger NDC earlier this year, which reflects our strong commitment of being part of the solution. The G77 and China has a central role to play in combating change, climate change, as it represents a vast majority of countries and world population. Working together can be crucial for the benefit of our people and for the well-being of future generations. His Excellency Mr. Antonio Guterres, Secretary General of the United Nations, called on developed countries to play a more integral role to assist small nations. The Secretary General said this is needed since the effects of the pandemic is reversing a lot of the work done by those countries in achieving the SDGs. G77 members are among the countries at greatest risk from the impacts of climate disruption. Ambitious multilateral action and solidarity are needed to save lives and livelihoods from the pandemic and the climate crisis. We need to use the recovery from COVID-19 to put us back on track to achieve the sustainable development goals and to win the battle against climate change. Climate action will be central to all our efforts. We need to attain the goals of the Paris Agreement. I count on members of the Group of 75, 77 and China to serve as the global role models for a green, inclusive and sustainable recovery. The countries you represent have historically been among the strongest advocates for the SDGs and ambitious climate action. The world needs your leadership now more than ever. With that, he made it clear that financing must be available for all developing countries, especially those deemed vulnerable. This point was also supported by Chile's foreign minister. I'm urging the developed countries to fully capitalize the adaptation and resilience initiatives launched at the Climate Action Summit. They need to be fully operational and scaled up. The Paris Agreement emphasizes the importance of common but differentiated responsibilities in light of national circumstances. Most of you will need financial and technical support to recover from COVID-19 and to scale up your climate ambition. A critical part of this will be enhanced financial assistance. That includes the decade-long goal of mobilizing 100 billion US dollars a year for mitigation and adaptation. Vice President and United Nations Environment Program's Champion of the Earth, Dr. Bar Jagdil, said the widespread impact of COVID-19 has sidetracked many countries from achieving the SDGs. The VP said he hopes the effects of COVID-19 is not used to weaken finances towards climate change. One of the primary purposes of this exercise is to say notwithstanding the COVID-19 impact on our economies, given which when we're hoping COVID-19 would have more of a short-term impact, at least in its from its medical aspects, would have a longer-term impact in relation to the economy. But we're faced with an ex existential threat here that will not go away. If anything, it's getting worse. If you look at the, the science coming out, some of the warmest years are now and we're, uh, with, with its impact on the ecology, etc. So we cannot lose sight of this. And this is a powerful group, the G77 and China, 134 countries. And if we are going to go next year to COP, the COP in Glasgow, this, this engagement today is to say that we have to find some level of solidarity in this group if we want to achieve higher levels of ambition and dedicated and adequate financing to avert to the, the excesses, to finance mitigation actions and adaptation actions. We can only do that 
true solidarity. He said over the next year, the group must work to build a sense of solidarity so that pools of resources can be given to countries with limited capabilities. We need financing at scale now, not in the future, but now. And there are already pools of money where pledges have been made that we have to work as a group to unlock. And we pro probably will need the solidarity of the group and the bigger countries in this group to help us to do that. China's Minister of Ecology and Environment said China will boost its nationally determined contributions. That China will increase its NDCs, adopt stronger policy measures, and strive to reach carbon dioxide peaking by 2030 and carbon neutrality by 2060. This important announcement reflects China's firm determination to actively respond to climate change, take a green and low carbon development path, and promote the development of a community of shared future for mankind. He said China is committed to upholding the UN's Convention on Climate Change. With that, the Chinese minister also called on developed countries to recognize the challenges of developing countries. The developed countries must earnestly assume their emission reduction responsibilities and funding obligations, make up for pre-2020 gap in greenhouse gas emission reduction as soon as possible, and propose a more ambitious NDCs target up to 2020. So <clears throat> developed countries must implement the financial support commitment of providing 100 billion US dollars per year by 2020. Some of the lessons learned from battling COVID-19 must be used to tackle climate change. This is the view expressed by Minister of Health, Dr. Frank Anthony, when he delivered his presentation. One of the lessons he said is how the world was able to mobilize an unprecedented amount of resources to combat the virus. These lessons that we have learned so far, we can be able to transfer some of these lessons to our fight uh, for uh, mitigation and ad adaptation with climate change. Uh, leadership is necessary, and we know we have had these long battles of trying to get uh, you know, conventions in place so that we can uh, reduce the impact of climate change. And despite some setbacks, we have persons who are leading in the right direction and we need to import some of what we have just done with this COVID pandemic and bring it to the uh, fight for climate change. Uh, we also have been able to mobilize scientific talent, and we know that we can go faster uh, with innovations, with res research, so that we can be able to mitigate some of the effects of climate change. The health minister pointed out that like COVID-19, intensifying and adapting research will be critical to tackling climate change. You know, with the pandemic, we were able to lift the level of urgency. And because you know of the amount of people that have been infected and the cases, as of yesterday, for example, WHO has reported that we've had 43.5 million uh, confirmed cases with 1.16 uh, million persons uh, dying. Now, because of this urgency, we have been able uh, to focus the world's attention to do all the things that I just spoke about. And I think while climate change is here and we know that it has these impacts on the lives and livelihood of people, because it has been long and drawn out and we are not seeing these vivid changes, perhaps one of the reasons that we are taking so long in adapting and trying to get mitigation mechanisms. And therefore, we need to have a different mindset and a different um, framework with how we work. And that framework obviously must include urgency. The event brought together ministers and senior policymakers from developing countries to raise awareness and build partnership to battle climate change in a COVID-19 environment. Ambassador Forbes July gave a synopsis of some of the issues highlighted during the discussions of the Group of 77 and China meeting. It is therefore critical that there be a commitment to a formative action on climate change rather than a lowering of ambition. Four, against this backdrop, 
Financing for mitigation and adaptation to climate change is more critical today than ever before. To date, developing countries have failed to live up to their developed countries have failed to live up to their obligation to provide new additional predictable and adequate climate financing to assist developing countries in realizing their ambition to grow along low carbon pathways and develop resiliency. Developed countries have also not lived up to their obligation to promote, facilitate, and finance the transfer of or access to environmentally sung technologies and know-how to developing countries. Despite that, some countries have developed their own models to combat climate change. Guyana, the ambassador said, is recognized for its efforts to tackle climate change with its low-carbon development strategy. Guyana's efforts in this regard are recognized through its Low Carbon Development Strategy, LCDS, and payment for forest climate services model between Guyana and Norway, which has incentivized sustainable forest management and avoided deforestation. This represents the first national scale model of Red Plus and one of the first national level strategies on low carbon development. The success of the LCDs and, Guyana's, uh, and Guyana Norway model helped support the development of Article 6 of the Paris Agreement, which provided the opportunity for the trading of internationally transferable mitigation outcomes. The United Nations Climate Change Conference, which was scheduled to be held this year, was postponed for an entire year. However, the ambassador said that the G77 and China group will use the time to build better relationships to foster more meaningful outcomes.